This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord, and you may be seated. Well, once again, welcome to worship and a special welcome to any visitors we may have with us this morning. And a reminder to fill out that connection card. It's the post-it note on your heartbeat. If uh, you also have a prayer request, uh, you could fill that card out as well. Or if you're a visitor and would like more information about our church, uh, we invite you to, to fill out that card. So I hope that all of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know that we did in our family. We were able to drive down to my hometown of Buffalo, Minnesota. Uh, we were supposed to gather with my cousin Steve at his house, some 30 of us, but he ended up getting the flu. And so we all ended up doing our, our own thing. So we were at my parents' house and my mom wanted to make just ham, but I said, no, we gotta have turkey. So uh, my, my brother-in-law, Grant, he came to the rescue and, and made a turkey. So we had a wonderful meal. I ate way too much. So it was myself and Mary and our son Paul and my sister Anne and her two kids, Soren and Signe. Yes, those are really her names, or their names, Soren and Signe. Uh, my brother-in-law, Grant, and of course my parents. And I uh, had a wonderful time uh, having uh, conversation and food and hope all of you had uh, a good Thanksgiving as well. So we drove down early Thursday morning to get to Buffalo and we made our typical stop at Caribou Coffee in Alexandria. I love their coffee. My wife had the Fala La Latte, uh, which is a latte made out of eggnog and Paul of course had a cookie. And on the way out, I grabbed a napkin and Mary took over after Alexandria driving. So I looked at the napkin and it said this, life is short, stay awake for it. Life is short, stay awake for it. Isn't that the truth? Life is short. And I was reminded of that all over the place over the couple of days that we were down in Buffalo. Life is short. That ended up being kind of the theme of our time down in Buffalo. Life is short. Allow me to offer a few examples. So it seems like just yesterday that my sister Anne and I were out in the backyard making snowmen. And you, know, you have to have the snow at the right consistency. It has to be just a little bit wet. And I can, I can vividly remember this, making snowmen with my sister. And I can remember what clothes I was wearing. I can remember getting sopping wet after walking into the house because the snow was more that wet consistency. I can remember it vividly. And then poof, you're 38 years old. Your sister is 42 years old. And the two of you are at the window looking into the backyard, the same backyard that you made those snowmen in. And you're watching your children making snowmen in the backyard. Life is short. Life moves fast. How? How does this happen? How does life move so quickly? Why is life so short? And it doesn't stop there. This past July was the 20th anniversary of my best friend's death. And when I was home, 
I found a CD that I had borrowed from him just a few weeks before he died. I hadn't seen this CD in 20 years, yet there it was. And it seems like just yesterday that I had borrowed that CD from my friend. Life is so incredibly short. Where does the time go? Over those two days, Soren and Signe and Paul played a lot with my Legos, and I hadn't seen my Legos in quite some time. And it brought back all sorts of memories, and so I, I dove right in with them as well, and I was playing with the Legos, and it brought back all of these memories of things that I had constructed with those Legos. And now they were playing with them. Life is short. Time moves by very quickly. And how is it that I have a five-year-old? It feels like I was just five, and now I have a five-year-old that I'm responsible for. And then I looked at my wife over these two days, and I thought about how we had met, and in April we'll be celebrating 15 years of marriage. How does that happen? Life is so incredibly short, and it moves so quickly. If any of you have any ideas on why life moves by so quickly, please, please help me out. Let me know. I'm still trying to figure this one out. Life is short. Stay awake for it. So later on Thanksgiving night, with aching full stomachs, and I ate way too much, and a head that ached about life being short, Mary and I went to a movie called Arrival. And if you haven't seen this movie, it's a fabulous movie. I highly recommend it. Don't worry, I will not give away the plot. But one of the characters in the movie asked something to the effect of, how would you live your life differently if you knew the outcome? And the character answered the question by saying something to the effect of, I guess I would slow down and spend more time enjoying things along the way. At least that's kind of the way I remember the answer in the movie. So then that got me thinking, of course, about the shortness and quickness of life. And then I started to think about how I have lived my own life. Have I enjoyed it enough? Have I loved my neighbors enough? Have I loved God enough? Have I, have I valued my family enough? Have I squandered my short little life? That question really got me thinking, and it was sort of a wake-up call, you might say. For some reason, that question invited me to wake up and realize that life is short. Now enters the gospel. In our gospel reading, Jesus talks about a time in the future when he will come again and set things right in the world, he says. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Jesus also says, Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. That is the message of Advent. It is also the message for how to live our short lives. Stay awake. Stay awake. Jesus is coming. In this short season of Advent, we use candles to light a path for our own selves. Throughout the four weeks of Advent, we light a candle each and every Sunday. These four candles light a path that both stretches forward to the time when Jesus will return and a path that stretches backward to when Jesus first appeared in our world in the flesh. In Romans chapter 13, it says, You know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. This passage compares the second coming of Jesus to waking up to a new day. The light is coming. Wake up. During Advent, we realize that we are living in this path of light between Jesus' first coming and God's ultimate reign. And on the first Sunday of Advent each year, we are reminded to be alert, 
to stay awake for the coming of God. I have an Advent devotional book by Henry Nouwen that I come back to each and every year. In the book, he says this, Be alert. Be alert so that you will be able to recognize your Lord and your husband, your wife, your parents, your children, your friends, your teachers, but also in all that you read in the daily papers. The Lord is coming, always coming. Be alert to his coming. When you have ears to hear and eyes to see, you will recognize him at any moment of your life. Life is Advent. Life is recognizing the coming of the Lord. How often, how often do you take the time to see the face of God in your family members or the people at the grocery store or even the people with whom you disagree? How often do you take the time to notice the fingerprints of God on all of the things around you? Are you going through life staying awake to the things that really matter? After all, life, life is really short. Life is short. Stay awake for it. So then how do we be alert to recognize our Lord and the people around us? How do we be alert to not take this life and its shortness for granted? How do we work to focus on the things that really matter in life? How do we go about living as though Jesus is going to come back tomorrow? How might you live life differently if you really truly knew that Jesus was coming back tomorrow? How do we stay awake and be alert? Well, this, this past weekend, over the last two days that I was in Buffalo, I, I became aware of a set of tools that might be helpful in this process of staying alert and being awake. For the coming of Jesus and to live as though Jesus is coming back tomorrow. It comes from the work of a doctor named Ira Boyack, and he is a doctor that works with the actively dying. And he wrote a book called The Four Things That Matter Most. In his book, he talks about how he counsels people at the end of life to say the four things that matter most in life, which he defines as, please forgive me, I forgive you, thank you, and I love you. Please forgive me, I forgive you, thank you, and I love you. And I love the simplicity and the absolute profundity of his work. In his book, he makes the argument that these four things can be said at any time in life, not just the end of life. So perhaps during this Advent season, we might practice these four things that matter most as a way to stay awake and to live as though Jesus is coming tomorrow. Have I mentioned that life is short? There's no time to waste. So during this Advent season, consider that those people that you need to ask to forgive you. Please forgive me or to ask for forgiveness for those sins that we commit as humans. Please, please forgive me. And then who are those people that you need to forgive in your life? I know I have a list. We all have a list. And isn't it interesting that the first two things that matter most have to do with forgiveness? And just a few days ago, I heard a great line about forgiveness. Forgiveness is letting go of the hope that the past can be changed. Forgiveness is letting go of the hope that the past can be changed. Now that's a profound statement. The third thing has to do with gratitude. Who are those people in your life that you need to say thanks to? What do you need to give thanks for in your life? Where do you need to express gratitude? Lastly, who are those people that you need to say, I love you to? Perhaps we don't say that enough. Just those simple words, I love you. I love you. We have a God who loves us beyond all imagination, and that same God calls us to love each other as well. 
So this year during Advent, why don't you give yourself the gift of these four things that matter most? I forgive you. Please forgive me. I love you. And I give thanks. After all, life is short. And Jesus is coming. Let's stay awake for it. Amen.